Trey goes, what's that then? So it's here. It's now. It's New Year's Day. And of course, it's game day. We're home for this one. We're off to the hive. It's Barnet v Swindon Tan. Well, I bet some of you are a little bit worse for wear today. Me? Cool, blimey. I had an absolute crazy mental night. Crazy fucker me, I tell you, right? I had a cup of tea and I was in bed by 10. Rock and roll! Anyway, that's enough of chatting bollocks. Let's get into football news. So Swindon currently sit 10th, and the last five games have been two wins and three losses. With Swindon winning their last game, a 1-0 against Notts County. Now, David Flipkoff is the manager for the Robins, and has been since June 2017. Taking charge of 31 games, winning 15, drawing 2, losing 14. And that gives him a 48.4 win percent rate. Now, Swindon Town's danger men are number 9, Luke Norris, who has 10 goals, 2 assists, assists in 19 games. Number 30, Kesha Anderson, who has four goals, three assists in 20 games. Number 22, Kane Woolery, who has three goals, one assist in 20 games. Number 31, Matty Taylor, who leads away with most assists with seven and two goals in 19 games. Now, the last meeting between the Bees and the Robins was back in September of this season. Barnett coming away with a 4-1 win. What a day, what a game. Shaq Corfurst with an hat-trick and probably one of the best goals I've ever seen a Barnett player score and Campbell Rice getting a penalty. Last time we played the Robins at home ended in a 2-0 win for Swindon Tan. But you'd have to go all the way back to 2007 for the last time Barnet played Swindon at home and beat them in the league. A 1-0 win to the Bees. Ollie Allen with the only goal. So let's get to the grand. Let's get three points and then let's get the fuck out of Tan. Team lose on its way. Come on Barnet! Team's in. You've got Craig Ross in goal. Brindley, Santos, Nelson, John Akindi, Campbell Rice, Cool First, Jack Taylor, Fongook, Belletti, Blackman. And this is the Swindon Town starting 11. And as you can see, all three of their danger men are starting. But Matty Taylor starts on the bench. <laughs> minutes in, Barnet nil, Swindon Town one. Gave away a silly free kick, we didn't need to do it. Free kick from about 30 yards and it's just gone straight into the top corner. 40 yards. Maybe even 40 yards. Craig Ross read it completely wrong. It's a fluke and it's just drifted in. Either way we're losing one nil. And literally a minute after that, Winden go straight down the other end. A few one-two passes, literally like a hot knife through butter. They put it across the goal line. It was destined to go in. Brindley does well just to clear it. Otherwise, that would have been 2-0. Less than 20 minutes played. Will Cross get on that? Yes! Yes! Get in there! Wow, talk about an instant reply. As soon as that happens, we go down the other end. Campbell Rice puts a nice ball in. John Kindy gets above everyone else, puts it in. 1-1. One, one. Come on, Barnett! Wow, it's all happening within five minutes. Again, it's just us being sloppy in that midfield. We've lost the ball. Valetti wins the ball, then we lose it by Nelson. They go down. Norris has pretty much a one-on-one -on -one with Craig Ross. Craig Ross pulls off a great save. Almost half hour gone, and we are killing them down this right-hand side. Brindley and Cameron Rice are working brilliantly together. Balls are going in all the time. We just need to get that final third to finish the ball. But then Swindon, when they go and attack, they do look dangerous as well. Still 1-1, one -one, almost half hour blade. Five to the half, it's still 1-1. One -one. We have got so much much going for us. Just that final third. So many times that we're almost in there and Swindon have managed to claw it away. Need to be attacking down this right hand side. Their left backs are weakly. Right on half time. Barnet one, Swindon two. You could argue we should have had a free kick going forward but it wasn't given. They got straight down the other end and we gave away another stupid free kick. Santos should have kicked it out in Rose Z. Managed to knock it past him and then Nelson got done like a kipper. We gave away a free kick and they scored from it. Again, we cannot defend set pieces. Didn't need to do it. Right, so it's half time and it's Barnet one, Swindon Tan, two. They caught us on the break with that last goal. In parts, we looked good. We looked really mobile and was closing down a lot better. It was two sloppy free kicks we gave away that we did not need to do. We really need to learn how to defend from set pieces. But going forward, again, we've had chances and it's just that final ball that we cannot connect with. We were killing him down this right-hand side. The second half, we've got to score two goals. We've got to go for the win. We're now in the bottom two again. I'm getting sick and tired of saying this. Jumping in and out like a fuck. Fucking yo-yo up and down. 45 minutes to go. We need two goals. Come on, Barnet. 63 minutes played. It's still 2-1 to Swindon. Totally different teams come out in this second half than Barnet. We're just giving everything away. I think our heads have dropped completely. Swindon have started the bright half. Don't look like we're going to do anything. 20 minutes to go, and we actually look like we've come alive for the first 
time in the second half. A couple of corners, just can't get onto anything. Still trading 2 1. Draws ain't good enough, we need the win. Into the last 10, no changes from us regarding tactics or players off the bench. Into the last five, we finally made a sub. Akinola's come off a phone book, but nothing's changed from us. So we ended 2017 the same way we started 2018, with another Barnet loss. The game finished Barnet 1, Swindon Tan 2. Is anyone else getting bored of me saying that? Because I'm really getting pissed off, frustrated and bored of keep saying the same thing week in, week out. The first half, we actually played some decent football and we looked like we was going to attack them a lot better. We had shape, we was controlling the midfield, we were destroying them down that right-hand side, but we just cannot finish in that final third. Birds. And again, we're our own worst enemy. We give away two sloppy free kicks that we don't need to do. And I don't understand how we cannot learn from this. Now, Swindon obviously had a game plan and they knew we can't defend set pieces. So that's what they played to. Get set pieces, Barnett can't defend, and that's how we'll go from it. Now, I don't want to say that obviously refs cheat and they're biased. And I don't want to blame the refs. We need to worry about our own performance before we even worry about how the refs done and what the other team have done. But Swindon, you don't need to throw yourself on the floor as much as you did. In that second half, we was nowhere near to be seen. We didn't even turn up. It was like a different team came out. So keep playing into the ref's hands. It was just embarrassing to watch. What is being said in that dressing room half time for us to completely switch off or come out and be a different team? It's just a shame knowing that in the first half we looked really good. Brindley and Campbell Rice down the right hand side looked great. But then in the second half we offered nothing really. We'd had nothing to do. It's like we had a plan A, sort of, and we couldn't do nothing. We couldn't break them down so we didn't have a plan B. We didn't know what to do. But this is where it winds me up and it shows how clueless that Mark McGee is. But apparently we're going to be an ostrich, stick a head in the sand and carry on with him. He waits till the 85th minute to make a sub and bring on a striker. You're losing 2-1 at home. You're 2-1 down at half time. Don't you think the change should have been made then? We had three shots on target all game. This hurts. You know that. This really does hurt watching what my club is going through now. It's like watching a dying relative or a family pet literally dying in front of your very own eyes and you're helpless. You can't do nothing about it. And all you want to do is just do something. You just want to get involved and try and do something, but you can't. You're helpless, and all you got to do is you got to sit there and watch it, and there's nothing you can do about it. I struggle to think that people think that we're doing okay, we're going to be all right. Since Mark McGee's been with us, he's taken six points out of a possible 27. We only won one game in all of December, and we've now lost four on the bands. He still doesn't know what his strongest team is. I know the window's open now. I don't trust McGee to get us out of this slump. We're in the shit, but we're not in it too deep that we cannot get out of it. We started the season underprepared. That's fair enough. We can all agree on that but what I can't understand is we never wanted to try and look at the loan system you're telling me all these clubs around the London based area the amount of premiership clubs are there Arsenal Tottenham Chelsea West Ham Palace even in the lower leagues QPR Fulham you're telling me that none of them had any players that was available and wanted to come to us even on loan because this is where I struggle to think that who's going to want to join us on a permanent base come straight into a club that's in a dogfight relegation battle and I don't want to sound negative but that is what we're in we are in the relegation zone right now and yes a few few wins will get us out of it. I can't see where they're coming from. We may be playing okay and getting better gradually in parts, but we can't defend to save our fucking life. And at the moment, we're struggling to score. So we are in a relegation battle. Despite everyone saying, our oh, McGee's negative, we need to be realistic. Yes, he is negative, but we are in this together. So no game next week. It was due to play Carlisle, but that's been postponed with Carlisle being in the FA Cup. So I'm going off to watch Hadley. But our next three games in the league are Crawley Town away, Lincoln City at home, and Cheltenham Town away. I'll be very very surprised if we manage to get a point out of any of them games. I really hope people behind the scenes are working their bollocks off to try and get some players in because I think we need between four to five players to come in. So unfortunately, we're starting 2018 with a loss and me being miserable. But don't forget to like, subscribe, leave any comments below. Follow me on Twitter. It's in the description. Share this video. So until next time, I'll see you later.